Hello and welcome to Project Art Now. Today we are making a deep on analysis on the Grim Tale Little Red Reading Hood. I did a short mention of it on last week's video, The Better Alternative to Show Don't Tell. Please watch it if you haven't, but this time I'm going all in. This week's manga is Yu Yu Hakucho. Get it via the link in the description and enjoy the adventures of the spirit world detective Yusuke Uramechi. Take a look at my store with a great variety of designs like the ones you see now on screen over high quality products. I'm sure you'll find something you fancy. Link in the description. Now let's dive in. Many think of Little Red Reading Hood as a simple children's story. At surface that might be the case, but I am now going to show that there is more to it as it had plenty to offer in terms of storytelling. First of all, what if I tell you the wolf is not the villain of the story? He is bad indeed, you know, with the whole thing of he being manipulative, but that doesn't make him the villain of the story. No, the title goes for another character. The true villain of the Little Red Reading Hood tale is her mom, as I believe she tried to get rid of the grandmother and even of her own daughter. Now, to prove both that the tale has more depth than one might think at first glance, and that the mom is the villain, despite barely even being in the story at all, I will be using the original tale. Well, the original translated tale. I don't speak German. So the tale starts by telling us of this little girl who is loved by everyone but most of all by her grandmother and there is nothing she not could give the child once she gave her a cup of red velvet that treated her so good that she would never wear anything else and so she was called little red cap i like to think there is something lost in translation and that she indeed wore other clothes in addition to her red cap also for here on forward I will be calling her Red Cap for simplicity's sake. One day her mother said to her, Come Red Cap, here's a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She's ill and weak and will do her good. Well, that sounds like a nice gesture from the mother. If it weren't for the fact that she is sending her little child alone into the woods. Now one may argue that Red Cap has truly been to her grandmother's hundreds of times before. And sure, that's a reasonable assumption, but was she alone? Because as the story will soon show us, this will be the first time she gets to go to her grandmother's on her own. Red Cap's mother gave her a set of instructions, set up before it gets hot, walk nicely and quietly, do not run off of the path or you might fall and break the bottle and those were her exact words. She did not care that her child could get hot as long as she doesn't break the bottle of wine, everything is a-okay. Also, while sending her cake and wine is good and all, shouldn't she have included a proper meal? I mean, if the grandmother is ill and weak, she won't be able to cook for herself. Which also brings the question, how did the mother know that the grandmother was ill? At that time there was no internet, no phones. The only way she could have known is if she went to visit her, saw the grandmother and then left her ill, weak and alone or if someone else informed her about the grandmother illness. But why would she even have an informant? Either way, the mother in this tale starts to look more sinister as the story progresses. The grandmother lived in the goods half a league from the village. There, when she entered the goods, Red Cap met the wolf for the first time, who greeted her, Good day, little Red Cap. Now, am I the only one who finds it suspicious that the wolf call her little red cap when they just met for the first time and that he meets her right when red cap was entering the woods how will the wolf know everyone call her that and that she will be there on her own that morning unless someone else informed him of her arrival the two of them engage in conversation where the wolf convinces red cap to wander off and he starts her with the pretty flowers and the sweet sing of the birds. He does this in order to get to the grandmother's house first, to eat her, then eat Red Cap once she arrives. But why go with this complicated plan? He could have eaten Red Cap right there. There was no one to stop him. But what if? There is another person who orchestrated the whole thing, the mother. And for her plan to work, she needs that both the grandmother and Red Cap are there with in the grandmother's house. Now, Later on, I will explain what I believe to be the mother's evil plan, but for now, let's continue. And so, Red Cap collected flowers to bring her grandmother. The wolf ran to her house, once there, knocked on the door, and when the grandmother asked, who's there, the wolf replied, little Red Cap, 
she is bringing cake and wine open the door. Now, here is something interesting. The wolf wasn't pretending to be Red Cap, because if he were pretending, he would have said, I am bringing cake and wine, instead of, she is bringing cake and wine. The grandmother didn't give it much talk as to who this person might be and why Red Cap wasn't being accompanied by her mother. But, in all fairness, she could have been too ill to consider such details. Anyway, she instructs the wolf to lift the latch as she is too weak to do it herself. He does it. Then, the door sprang open. The wolf then wasted no time. They buried the grandmother and disguised as her and laid on her bed. Little Red Cap who was collecting flowers all that time, she had gathered so much that she could not carry anymore. Now, I know she's a little kid and she already had the cake and the wine, but even so, she must have collected hundreds of even thousands of flowers. That's when she remembered her grandmother and sent away to her. Which proves kids don't get distracted by their phones or video games. They get distracted by literally anything. She arrived at her grandmother's and got surprised to see the door open. She felt uneasy, which means Redcap was intuitive. However, her innocence and lack of experience led her to ignore her gut. There is a lesson there. Redcap said to the wolf, believing to be her grandmother or grandmother, what big ears you have, the better to hear you with my child, replied the wolf. Now, we all know how the whole conversation goes on. But, here there are a couple of things I want to point out. First, the thing that caught Red Cap's eye was the size of the ear, and not the shape or the position of the head, which in my opinion should have been more obvious than the mere size. So, what if the wolf had the ability to lightly alter his body? And in fact, this ability was first foreshadowed when he first ate the grandmother. As we know, he devoured her whole. Imagine how wide he needed to open his jaws. For him to be able to do so, his body would have to have some sort of elastic properties that he used to try and look like the grandmother. Of course, his disguise was far from perfect, but good enough for him to fool and then eat Red Cap. After also eating her, the wolf had appeased his appetite and took an after meal nap and snored very loud. The huntsman who was passing by the house heard the wolf snoring, not knowing it was him and talked. How is the old woman snoring? I must just see if she wants anything. So he went inside and found the wolf sleeping on the bed. Now, the huntsman walking by at the right time, it's quite a coincidence, but I am willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. On the other hand, the fact that he decided to enter the house after hearing what he thought to be an old woman's unusual snoring, it's kind of dodgy to say the least. Now, the huntsman mentions that he had been seeking for the wolf for a long time and was about to shoot him but then thought it'd be better to cut him open and see if he could still save the grandmother. This chose us. The huntsman knew the wolf and his ability to eat a person whole. He successfully saved them, although barely. Red Cat quickly fetched great stones to fill the wolf's belly, and so, when the wolf woke up, he tried to run away, but the stones were so heavy that he collapsed and fell dead. Okay, there's so much to unpack there. First, the wolf didn't wake up as soon as the huntsman starts to cut him, which means the wolf lacked pain receptors, but he did survive the whole operation, and only died because the stones a little kid fetched a moment ago were too heavy for him, which means the wolf had superior resistance, capable of surviving almost anything. So it'd be fair to assume those stones were made of a material that weakened him. I know that sounds far-fetched, as no normal wolf could have done what he did, but at this point we can all agree that we are not dealing with the average wolf anymore. Red Cap talked about getting the stones. She couldn't know they were the wolf weakness, which means she's smart but lacks knowledge and experience. Well, she has now more experience, but I'm also baffled by the fact that the huntsman he didn't kill the wolf himself, as he intended from the beginning. The story tells that time later, Red Cap encountered a second wolf, also while being alone, but this time she did not fell for the trap. We don't know if this wolf 
also had all those special abilities as the first one. But at the very least, we know he also could talk and was clever as he tried to trick Red Cat and later the grandmother, just as the first one did. But now they knew better. The wolf waited for the Red Cat outside the grandmother's house to eat her. But why there? Why didn't the wolf try to eat her on the path? Red Cat and her grandmother outsmarted the wolf using the water of boiled sausages, causing him to fall and drown on a throw. Now, here's what I think it happened. Red Cap's mother wanted to kill the grandmother and Red Cap for the money. What money you may ask if there was no mention of it? Well, think about it. How else could an old lady afford to live on her own right in the woods? I did a bit of research on this and it's not extremely expensive to have a house on the woods, but it's far from being cheap. Just buying the cottage could be around 70,000 pounds and that's one of the cheap ones. Of course, that's at today's price. God knows how expensive it will be back then, but regardless, that's not including the expenses that will take for her to actually live there. Like getting the food, considering her age, it's likely she had to pay someone to get it from the village to her house. Also, there is the red cap she gave to her granddaughter. We are not told what material is made of, but we know the little kid will use it all day every day. So I assume it's high quality stuff which ain't cheap. Now how could we know the mother is this bagel person? Well, as mentioned earlier, she knew the grandmother was ill and either left her alone or had someone to inform her, and that someone was no other than the wolf. Those two were obviously on cahoots. How else could the wolf know when Red Cap were to go into the woods on her own? That's another proof of the mother's shady character, sending her own little child alone into the wood. I believe the mother and the wolf made a deal. She could arrange for Red Cap to go alone into the woods and when that happened the wolf would eat her along with her grandmother. But here's the tricky bit. It needed to be at the house. But why you might fairly ask? Simple. The mother wanted to take the heritage of the grandmother and be the only heir. But if the wolf were to eat them whole, how could she prove they were dead in order to take the inherited money? But if the attack happens on the house, the wolf will surely leave tracks like her, which the mother intended to use to prove there was a wolf attack, that both of them were dead, and then she would take over everything. The plan failed, so she tried again with that second wolf, but again it failed. Now, if you are thinking, well, of course it failed, it was a dumb plan all along, I'd agree with you, but remember, I'm claiming she's evil, not an evil genius. But what about the huntsman? I believe the mother tried to get him on her side, as a backup plan. That's why he was walking by the grandmother's house and went inside. But at the sight of the wolf, he had a change of heart and saved them instead. As you can see, the tale has good use of show don't tell, as mentioned on my last video. Also, character development, like little red cap, who not only did not let herself be manipulated by the second wolf, but with the help of her godmother, outwitted him. Also, there is the use of foreshadowing on the wolf's abilities, and there is the sinister villain who plots to kill an old lady and her own daughter for money. Of course, none of that is explicitly mentioned on the story. But come on, all the clues are there. But what do you think? Let me know on the comment section. Also, let me know if you enjoyed this and what other tale would you like me to do a deep analysis. But for now, I thank you for watching. Hope to see you next week. Bye.